Welcome back to my Growing California Goldenrod from Seed Series. It's day 65. By now I've realized that trying to grow two species in one pot was a really bad idea. I should have tried to just grow this in a separate pot. It's growing much slower. It's getting swarmed out by the Sweet Annie and pretty soon it's going to be covered by the canopy. So we have these little seedlings. I don't think I'll be utilizing those. Uh, these two primary ones look very healthy, the first and second movers. These other ones kind of develop funny. You know, they seem to have misshapen leaves or they're just developing very slow. That's a sweet Annie seedling. So during my transplant operations, uh, sowing seeds and whatnot, oftentimes I use the same gloves and then soil plus uh, ungerminated seeds get spread around and that's why there's a uh, different species scattered around sometimes germinating very late but so far these are they're not like great looking or anything they're just uh, sort of California weedy looking probably because I've seen them in the wild in fact I have uh, looking back at some uh, pictures online um, comparing them to you know what I saw in I think it was Santa Isabel East Preserve I saw a lot of beautiful flowers I think it was late spring last year and that turns out to be California goldenrod so it can grow 1.5 meters tall with a hairy stem according to the literature unlike the non hairy stems and uh, petioles and branches so to speak of uh, Sweet Annie to the left of this pot which can grow even taller so I think maybe 1.5 meters is a short estimate it can definitely go beyond two uh, it's a very attractive plant when it's in bloom so there's two more seedlings near the edge I have a feeling I won't need them this plant seems to be very robust despite its slow growth it has rhizomes but unlike the other things that I've grown in the past such as ginger ginseng and whatnot um, yerba mansa too which I just published a series on uh, two weeks ago you know that'll have rhizomes but typically I, I thought of rhizomes um, plants that have them as being just you know very fussy and slow growing and vulnerable and that could still prove to be the case but so far it hasn't this has been resilient the germination rate is not high maybe that's just because the conditions I used for all three species sweet Annie California goldenrod and yerba mansa just don't favor the latter two so I planted this too low in retrospect um, at the time I was like this is just perfect but there was no stem to sort of position the whole thing perpendicularly by and even if there was sometimes you know in the early stages the stem is very malleable uh, according to phototropism and just bend wherever the sun goes so you can plant something thinking it's uh, at the perfect angle and then it turns out not to be in Later on, you'll decide whether to adjust or not. Uh, typically, it's just easier to spin the pot. So that wasn't too bad. Um, as you can see, when I scooped this out from the pot, it had a root protruding underneath uh, that fistful of soil. So I'm just going to do some watering and hope that this thing recovers. My gut instinct is it might take a while, at least a few days, uh, if not longer. Sometimes for my Joshua tree transplant, uh, after everything died from root rot, you know, that one seedling just sat in a pot for months and nothing happened. So in most cases, uh, wet leaves touching dirt equals rotten leaves later on. I don't know if that's going to be the case here. I tried to plant this somewhat on a tiny artificial hill of its own. It's somewhat elevated on a mound. I know it's hard to see from here, but, um, you know, to the eye, it's very apparent when you're handling this. So uh, sometimes I use a squirt bottle and hose down the leaves. It's day 79. As you can see, the Sweet Annie plant, the main plant, got giant. I rooted everything out. So the backup specimen is doing particularly well for, well, considering how confined it is and its conditions. It's trying to grow out there and get away from the Sweet Annie plant and get some sun. I pulled out the other Sweet Annie plants prior to this. And there's not much growth here. I kind of expected that after a transplant um, you shift around all the soil contacting the roots you break some roots no doubt so by all that shifting around you know different areas that were contacting potting mix particles are no longer and so forth and um, you rip up all these like 
micro hairs on the roots and whatnot. You're just causing a lot of damage. So obviously you don't want to do that, but I had to. My plant is displaying phototropism. It's bending towards the sun because it only gets it from one angle every day. And I'm going to water again. It's on a slight elevation on a little mound compared to the rest of the soil. Now there's really no point in having everything on the perimeter of the potting mix be completely level and this mimics probably a more natural environment or maybe not. I think I saw this growing mostly on the basis of uh, small mounds. So it's day 86. Scant difference has been noticed despite the passing of over a week but it still looks very healthy. This is one of the few plants I've had that just seems to take whatever I throw at it and you know, there, I've switched the position of this pot. You know, not much is really going on. It's growing a lot slower. It does form a rhizome, or so I've read. And to me, that kind of explains why it's growing a lot slower. Um, this is a perennial. It's not an annual, like Sweet Annie. So the Sweet Annie is huge. You know, just saw that to the very left. Just a glimpse of it. And I keep watering. So, so far I've been using distilled water. I have a water distiller at home. But at some point with all these plant projects going on with the Sweet Annie and the passion fruit vine taking up so much water, I just had to stop that. And I think it was late April, no, maybe early May 2017, I just had to stop and use tap water, which is fine if you're flushing out, you know, just liters upon liters of water. So it's day 94, the leaves look bigger and more erect. I think the transplant uh, recovery phase is over. So there's explosive growth now. Part of that could also be just due to me really saturating the wa uh, potting mix with water. Whereas before I was just, you know, doing the bare minimum to get by. So, you know, this uh, plant series, I know it's not very interesting so far. But eventually this thing should get pretty big and it should live for years, although I don't think I'm going to carry on this series for years. I'll probably just get it to the point where it's, you know, relatively big and has rhizomes and then I can dig that up and show that to you. So I switched the position, it's at a slightly lower elevation and actually the passion fruit vine leaves are starting to block out some of the sun, but it still gets enough sun during the day. I read that it's uh, suitable for you know strong shade or light shade or you know sun without reflection so probably don't want to have it next to any glass surfaces uh, or reflectors just out in the full sun or in positions to get lots of sun during the day and have reflections so that's uh, pretty much it I have this new concern that the leaves are getting too long and droopy especially when I water them you know, it's day 99, so as you can see, it's much longer now. And when I water, some of the bottom ones can touch the soil and get wet. And usually that uh, forebodes uh, rotting foliage, but that hasn't been the case. As you can see here, there's uh, some secondary growth coming out of the side. It's coming off a very low base. You know, this thing doesn't really have a, a fuzzy stem like advertised, uh, at least not yet. And it's been... 99 days so it's been a very long time this thing is a slow grower but I don't have m many complaints because it's just very robust um, how often do you grow a plant and not see any spots on the leaves and despite the leaves getting longer and touching the soil when wet you know everything looks really healthy I'm sure there are natural predators that are just dying to get to this and eat it but like the wild specimens I saw that's pretty healthy and it's gradually becoming more aesthetic even though it just sort of resembles a, a weed that I see often in my hikes and probably just didn't know of in the past it's day 107 so the leaves are much longer and droopier some of the tips are touching the pot and you know when I water there's no way I can go to each plant and just kinda use a towel and dab off the water so I just leave the water there uh, the water droplets serving as magnification glasses and frying the plants. You know, that hasn't really proven to be the case despite me doing this on purpose and just leaving 
all these big water droplets there. And this plant doesn't seem to have much of an orientation anymore. It just kind of looks like a ground sprawling, ground creeping plant. It's taking up most of the pot like this and I hope the leaves can just get long and big enough so they can go over the edges and that way just um, you know, not be lying on the surface of the soil when they're wet. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for episode 3.